63 are in Russia. A program where we discuss with the honorable commissioners where they outline the achievements and activities of the governor, his excellency, the senior senator, and the journalists drill them with their various questions on what they think they should know and what should not. Today, we are in the office of the Honorable Commissioner for Justice, the Chief Commissioner for that matter, in the three hour governments. I'm talking about Leonard Silk, Barista Silsia Kolis, a long time ally to the Governor of the United States. And I'm not here alone, I'm with some senior colleagues. And Olu Vincent, daily independent correspondent in the state. Okay. Sir? Yeah, George Kennedy Zoma, reporting for the Jewish Tribunal's papers. Okay, sir. Sister, may we meet you? I'm welcome. I'm Chief COC Ako Lisa, Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in the state. Okay. And um, Chantel, I'm not yet a SIRC, but I wear SIRC, a version of my office as Attorney General. Okay. I would say that. Um, it has been a, a pleasant one. It has been a challenging one. The work of the Attorney General of the state is not an easy one, but it takes experience and um, commitment to the administration of justice to be able to do well as Attorney General of the state. From the one when I was made the commission, I made a commitment that I was going to change things and leave the administration of justice in Imo State better than it was before I came here. And I placed my mind on that, to achieve that. And uh, the focal direction that I wanted was to ensure that justice was brought to the people that the people of Imo State had access to justice. And that was what motivated me at the time, the first bill that the governor signed into law as we came in was the Administration of Criminal Justice Law. By that law, all the leakages that made it difficult for justice, for trial to take place in the high court, in the magistrate courts, were eliminated. And that law, that law has fastened the pace of justice administration in the state. So for me, that is a milestone achievement. And the reports we are getting since that law was passed is that um, a lot of things have been done to fasten the pace of criminal justice administration in the state. So, senator zone by senator zone. How many courts can you say that is functional? No, there is no court that is not uh, functioning. There is no zone that doesn't have functional high courts. Okay. Uh, Law has high courts. Uh, or Kiwi has high courts. Or where the zone has high courts. How many each? Uh, we have a high court in Olo. Okay. How many? A high court complex in Olo. And there are four judges. There are some local governments that have two because of the largeness of the local government. And so, but during the, because of the insecurity, okay. some of the courts relocated when they were attacked. They relocated to be sitting in a well. Uh, so that is the only challenge we have. But as the, the insecurity is subsiding, the courts are going back to their original places to, to sit. They are going back to their original places to sit, so that is the situation. But mostly the courts are functioning, and even those that cannot sit in their original places, they still sit in a way. So the courts are on there. The Imo State Law Report is a, a compilation of the judgments of the high courts in Imo State and the Customary Court of Appeal. Yeah. The last time that Imo State Law Report was printed was in 2002. During the 
administration of uh, Archicle then one. When Chief JT Uno, the SAM, was the Attorney General, okay. since that 2002, all the judgments of the High Court have not been published. The essence of publishing a law report is to codify, to have on record the judgments of the different high courts for precedent. Judges deliver judgments, and if they are not reported, they are only in the files of the judges in their various uh, offices and courts. But where they are reported is reported for the general public, for the state, for everybody, for everybody in the world. You can come from America, you want to know judgment of uh, Justice uh, Okoha. How has she been fair doing as a judge? You pick up the law report and check and see the judgments of Justice Okoha. You see the judgment of uh, Justice Aleno. Uh, you see the judgments delivered by, and on topical issues. What is the High Court of Imo State sharing about chieftaincy, the chieftaincy law of Imo State? What is the High Court saying about presentation, um, selection, and the recognition of a, an, an aspirant or an as elect? How does the government accord recognition? Those issues that arise, how has the court treated them? You go to, it doesn't, it's not only, the law report is not only for lawyers. It's for anybody that is interested in issues that have gone to court. Tenancy matters, how do the high courts consider the issues of tenancy matters, defamation matters, every other matter that you know the court has jurisdiction. What is the, how are the courts, how are the judgments, how do the courts um, look at them? Land matters and all that. So it's not just for the judges, but the, why it is important is that for a judge to serve out his tenure as a judge, and there is nowhere his judgment is reported. It doesn't, it's not good. Because that report is what will last forever. It's a record of those judgments. So for, for Imo State to have stayed since 2002 to today without recording the reports, I mean uh, the judgments of our judges, was not, it was not a nice thing to do. It was not nice. So when I came on board, I decided that I must get it done. I must achieve it. Because the governor was emphatic about some of these um, things that we have to establish, uh, recover. Because of his 3R mantra, we have to recover some of these things that have been abandoned. And one of them is this law report. Since 2003, 2002. The last one was 2003. And then today is 2023. That is 20 years ago. Whoa. But this is supposed to be an annual report. Annual report. It must say law report. It's supposed to be every year. So for 20 years, it has not been published. I don't know why. This other attorney general and other uh, um, administrations did not find it worthy that it has to be printed or published. Where was it published? 2003. Yes. 1993 to 2003. And three, yes, that's the last one. Wow. So since then, no other law report has been reported, I mean, published in Nemo State except this one. So in our volume, it will come like this. Okay. But I intend to make it a yearly affair because our, our my department uh, that is in charge of uh, law reporting, we have a department in this ministry that is in charge of law reporting. Wow. So for this year, what has that department been doing? They have a director there with other staff of that department. Okay. And for these 20 years, they have not reported, they have not compiled any report. Oh. report. And when I came, there was no report. It's not, it's not as if they have compiled and kept, and then it was not printed. But by the time I came, there was no, no report. Wow. So we started from the scratch and um, appointed a committee headed by Justice, um, okay. it's, uh, Justice uh, Ibama. He was the chairman of our committee, okay. and then with the director, and they went through, and we were able to produce select judgments from over, we had over 500 judgments, oh. uh, but we selected How just, many, uh, just, judgment you have? Uh, we submitted, uh, we got only 
49 judgments here. Judgment With, that will publish. No, no, judgments. Not the judgment deaths. Judgments of the court. How many, how many judgment deaths do you have? A name will say. <laughs> Every day there is, uh, the courts give judgments, and uh, it's not uh, something you can say, these are the number of judgment deaths you have. A okay. name will say. Every day the courts issue judgments, and judgments are for individuals, against individuals, judgments are against the state, judgments are against the companies. Judgments are against, so I can't. In the last administration, mm. that lasted for eight years, how many yeah. judgment deaths? Against government. Against government. It's not, um, it's not something I can give you offer. It's oh. not something I can give so you offer. Of course, there are a lot of judgments against the Irish administration. A lot of judgments against them. Uh, it's something that uh, has to be looked at from, because most of them are on a P. Uh, so we cannot really say these are judgments, except the ones that have gone for execution, where they have filed uh, proceedings for execution. But invariably, we are content, we are handling those of them that are against the government, and that is why we don't have pressure from that side. Because when I came in, I appointed a committee on um, we we try to settle some of those judgments. We called everybody that has a judgment against the state to appear before our ADR committee, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Committee, to try to see whether those judgments can be settled. So, yes, settled out of court, so that we don't have to go and continue to appeal against them, or they themselves appealing against the government where it's against them. But we try to resolve, and some of them were resolved. And we know a lot of them that, like uh, the case of uh, um, the former deputy governor, um, Jude Abbaso's case, okay. we settled it here, okay. and um, the government, the governor, concluded, and we decided to pay him, okay. and we paid. Okay. We also we also have a case um, with MCC, okay. Hadel and Enik, which is, was at the court of appeal. We had a meeting with uh, Iwayan, okay. and he came on board. He withdrew the appeal he filed, and the governor paid. Oh, paid. It's a compilation of all the, some of the roles he did, Hadal and Enik did, okay. and they were the court of appeal against the government. But okay. being that the governor didn't want us to have issues with him, we had to settle with him. We settled that of Jude, I mean Jude uh, uh, Abbaso. We got to the one of um, Madumere. Madumere, had, we had two meetings with him. He was here, I had a meeting with him here. He had a meeting with the governor. And then he was insisting that what he presented was what was his true um, um, claim. But we pointed out to him that there are certain things you cannot claim. Okay. He was claiming things that the government was not possible, like claiming um, security Votes. vote. An impress. For security when you were no longer in that office. And we told him the person who was in the office at that time was using that security vote. So you, it's not an entitlement, it's not an emolument. Remove all those ones that are not emoluments so that the government can pay you the ones that are emolument. Okay. He refused. He said he was entitled to all of them. And he was, that was why he was posting a, a, a bill of about one point something billion. Wow. And then try to, while we were doing that uh, negotiation, he, he went back to court. Because we went out of the court for some time. He went back to court and uh, got the judgment. Because by the time we came already, they had already had that, that judgment was pending. We tried to settle with him. But he went back to court to try to execute that judgment. Uh, trying to execute a judgment of uh, one point something billion. And we had already filed our appeal against it and all that. So it, that was what led to all those crises at the time. But um, up till now, uh, the, 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 the thing has not been settled. You understand? Uh -huh. It's under the, it has gone to the Court of Appeal and all that. But in the spirit of um, Imo, he should have made some concessions. Mm -hmm. And when it was clear that those things he were claiming, he was claiming, were not really things he should claim, he should have taken the ones that were approved, approved by government and then given the government the benefit of the doubt. But that was, that's another thing. So that is, there are a lot of 
matters like that that we have tried to settle. And we have said there are some contractual obligations we also settle. A lot of those contractual obligations we've settled. Most of those uh, indebtedness, the governor has been forthright in trying to settle some of those people, especially Imo, prominent Imo people who have issues with the government so that uh, there won't be any, any uh, crisis in the state. But it's, uh, it's what a government should do. You should not allow every matter to go to court, every matter to be litigated up to Supreme Court. No, it's not, it doesn't, it's not good for government and for the people. So we are trying our best through our ADR committee to try to, to settle some of those judgment deaths. Peel it out of court? Settle them out of court, yes. Okay, sir. Um, I know that my, my senior police, they have questions for you. Yes. Let me start by my rights. I want to ask the Committee of Medicine, and I know under your office you can recommend for the condition of the condition of the prisons. So what is your office to do in this regard? Since you came with me, I have not done any research in this based on the Yes. Thank you very much. We, when we came, when we came in in 2020, the governor reconstituted the committee on the prerogative of mercy, and um, the committee sat severally, and uh, we had the first list of uh, inmates of the prison that were released. That was after the COVID, because um, the Attorney General of the Federation wrote to all the Attorney Generals to last with the Chief Judges to so deconcess the prison. So we met, the committee met, and recommended 22 inmates for release, and which Recommendation His Excellency graciously approved and they were released. That was in 2000 and in 2000, 2001, 2000-2001. Then um, subsequently there was the jailbreak. The committee was sitting to consider other persons for prerogative of mercy when the jailbreak occurred. So most of the people that were even uh, being considered to be released on prerogative of mercy, many of them left the prison and never returned. Some of the ones that returned, who refused, or some of the ones that refused to run away, we, the committee met and we decided that uh, they are entitled to a governor's pardon because of their good conduct. And we had met and uh, placed before the governor a list of about um, 10 persons, 10 persons. Uh, the letter has just gone to the governor and uh, we are hopeful that uh, he will announce the release. But I've also detailed the correctional service to give us the names of more inmates who have become of good conduct and who, they, in their opinion, they think which will be released. You see, what happens in this state is that people who don't understand the principles upon which the committee work, they write letters asking for murder suspects, kidnappers, all sorts of uh, criminals to be released. But the guideline is that we don't recommend persons that committed capital offenses for pardon. Persons that committed capital offenses for murder, murder, kidnapping, and all that, except in special circumstances. But outside the world, we discovered that most of the most of the most of the customary courts and uh, police courts are mostly in the federal So, what is your uh, minister to do? At least for the profession, to bring the place a kind of uh, yes. 
Habitable. Yes. My brother, it is the neglect of the past administration that has placed us in this infrastructural decay that we are witnessing in several sectors. You can agree with me that if previous administrations had taken on the roads that His Excellency is doing now, that money for the roads would have been diverted into other areas. But now, we are still doing roads. Enugu State has stopped doing roads. Anambra State has stopped doing roads. So they are now facing the other areas. I believe that if His Excellency is giving a second tenor, by that time, he won't be talking of these major roads. He will have enough funds to attack other areas like rehabilitation of the cost, magistrate cost, customary cost. These are public in, uh, uh, buildings, public uh, uh, institutions that need to be worked on. The Ministry of Justice here, we don't have enough office space for lawyers. Most of our lawyers come from their houses to court. They prepare their cases at home because there are not enough office space for them. So we also appeal to the governor to help us construct a new Ministry of Justice building where we'll have enough space for, judge, for lawyers to sit in. Many of them don't have tables where they sit to prepare their cases. And then, so it, we, but we will be patient with the governor because he's trying to capture some of the vital ones after these roads, I know he will enter into other areas and then we address them. But for now, we have to manage. We have to manage. The DPP, we have an office in uh, Uguta. We have a DPP in Olo. We have a DPP in uh, Kiwe. We have a DPP in um, Mbise. And then the DPP here in Owele. The former DPP office in Owele, we have abandoned it. It's at the magistrate court, that uh, former high court. And they are all here. We are squatting. All of us, are, we are managing here because that place is no longer OK. So we know that uh, with resources, better resources, the government will. But I, I know that uh, it's a matter of time because with the standard of rules the governor is doing in the state, nobody will go and talk about building uh, uh, roads from Olu to Okigwe or from Okigwe to Owere or from uh, Omaha to Owere. So by the time these ones are sorted out, the resources of the safe will be channeled to other areas. And that is how we will start to standardize on the infrastructure of the state. Statistic, statistically, want to know how many cases you have been able to use this new branch statistically? Uh, it's not something I can give you often. Because our lawyers are all over the place. We have, since that law also stated that uh, non-police lawyers cannot prosecute cases in magistrate courts, we have appointed 21 prosecutors, lawyers. The governor gave us approval. We recruited 21 prosecutors who have been posted to the different customer, I mean, uh, magistrate courts to assist in prosecution of cases in those courts. Because a situation where there are only about five or three uh, police prosecutors that are lawyers, you find out that with that law, they cannot prosecute the cases in the magistrate court. So we had to recruit and train those lawyers. They are now at the magistrate court helping in the prosecution of the cases. So because the cases are, many, many of our cases are not, uh, they are ongoing. I cannot uh, give you. Uh, the number. But what I can assure you is that that law has helped us to speed up the trial process because there is a time now between the, 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 for the police to charge the matter to court. There is a time also for the DPP to look at the case file and then file information on the high court. There is a time for the matter to be uh, looked into, the trial to go on and last and judgment delivered. So these time lags and um, these timelines put in into that law has made it um, difficult for anybody to delay any trial 
in the court, criminal trials in the court. So it's fa it has fastened the space of criminal trial. That is the essence of that law, and that is what we are observing. The little, little developing, you know, as the law develops, as they practice with it, there are areas that we might need some amendments to be more effective. And we are telling the magistrates, as they are experiencing such um, issues, they should bring it up to us for us to send the bill to the House of Assembly to have such areas amended. But definitely the law is a progressive one and is helping the state in the administration of criminal law, criminal justice. Okay, sir. Uh, mine was uh, similar to the questions that have already been asked. Mm -hmm. uh, there is this yearning by the people of the state for more customary courts mm -hmm. in the states. Uh, but they feel that the, the number that is that we have for now mm -hmm. is not enough mm -hmm. to address cases that demand the attention of customary courts. So, your, your, your ministry, mm -hmm. is it planning, mm -hmm. is it, has it any intention the of more yes, uh, what you raised is exactly what I said that when I came in as Attorney General, I realized that there is need to take justice to the people. And the way to take justice to the people is to have more adjudicative system that will make justice reachable to the ordinary person in the rural area. So what I did was to enter into a collaboration with the Hague Institute for Innovation in Law in Switzerland. And they came here, and we had about four workshops sponsored by Hague in this state. And the Hague, Hague Institute for Innovation in Law is in Switzerland. and. Um, the institute partnered with us, and they were here. We had two sessions at the Bonn Hotel, where they came from Switzerland. And at the end of the, that, the Hague Institute with us were able to identify the justice needs of Imo State. And you remember, that was one of the programs that His Excellency launched. At the time we launched the, the, the justice needs um, um, template at Concord Hotel, the, the strategy launch. We did the strategy launch at Concord Hotel and then identified the justice needs of Imo State. These were the, 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 the products of the workshop, Three People Center Pathways Innovation. Imo people will have ADR as first port of call in justice delivery process using Imo justice movement as the cash phrase. Imo people will be made aware of justice delivery process and they arise through grassroots engagement. Imo people will have access to digitization of court proceedings, including visual proceedings. Five justice needs, eight goals, 30 targets, three justice pathways and innovations. Now, at the end of our, this is our collaboration, the justice needs of Imo people. At the end of this uh, collaboration, the, 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 Strategy launch took place and we presented all these things to the Hague Institute and they took it back to Switzerland. And um, I want to announce to you that just last week, the Hague Institute for Innovation in Law, in collaboration with the United Nations, has approved our IMO Community Justice Center. Community Justice Center where we intend to have an ADR center in every autonomous community in Imo State. What's ADR? Administ uh, alternative dispute, dispute resolution. resolution. If you are not qualified and you come here and tell me you want to become a judge, I will not look at you, no matter even if you are my sister. Because I owe it as a duty to the state to ensure that those who come to JSC, who come, who we interview are qualified lawyers, who, if appointed judges, will do very, very well as judges. That's what we are doing. So the, the lawyers are not complaining. The lawyers are not complaining. The judges are not complaining because they see the quality of persons 
that are appointed under this administration. So in that area, we are doing well. Also in the area of defense, which is our primary responsibility, defending the state in matters before us. We have not, uh, we've been doing well, our lawyers have been doing well because I encourage them. The ones that we don't, we, they cannot handle, we fan out the briefs to senior advocates. We fan out the briefs to senior advocates. And then we ensure, we follow up and ensure that there is no embarrassment for the state. So it is um, something that I can beat my chest and say that we have been doing well because we have been taking full grabs control of uh, litigations against the state yeah. in all respects. And then, uh, what else? These uh, innovations I told you about. The this, these innovations I, I, I talked about. I said the judgment depths, we are trying to settle some of them. We recommend some of them for settlement. We approach the people. We, are, we, don't, we don't allow them to, to pursue the government. We go to them. We go to them and ask them. We negotiate with them. We go to them and try to negotiate with them. And we call them, we invite them, we have meetings with them, and then we try to negotiate it. That is why are, you don't have too many of these uh, uh, noise about judgment then. Yeah. So we want to thank you for your time, for having us, and for exhaustively narrating to us the achievements you've had so far under our watch. And please keep your doors wide open for us to come in again. Thank you. The doors are open. Okay, <laughs> Always open. <laughs>